You know what? I keep seeing the same thing everywhere. Every company is announcing their AI transformation and every leader is talking about it. Your LinkedIn feed is probably full of it right now. But I need to tell you something that nobody is really saying out loud. Inside most of these companies, AI isn't transforming anything. What it's actually doing is showing everyone what's been broken all along. AI. 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 Artificial intelligence. And that's the uncomfortable truth we need to talk about. But here's what's interesting. Once you understand why it's broken, the fix is actually simpler than you think. So here's what everyone thinks happens. You test your model performance with small amounts of data. You run a successful pilot. The demo shines. Stakeholders are impressed. Leadership approves budget to scale. The system goes live. Everyone assumes it will just keep working, right? Wrong. Because here's the thing. When your foundation is cracked, adding something smart on top just makes the cracks more obvious. Think of it this way. AI doesn't fix bad data, it makes bad decisions faster. It doesn't remove bias from your systems, it amplifies it at scale. And it definitely doesn't align your teams, it just reveals how misaligned they have been the whole time. So the real question isn't which model you should use, it is what system are we actually plugging this into. Let me tell you something I see constantly. I walk into an organization and I ask a simple question. What was your revenue last quarter? And you would think that's easy, right? But then I get five different answers from five different systems and nobody knows which one is actually correct. Customer data, even worse. 10 different versions from 10 different systems, none of them working or talking to each other. So when they deploy AI, it gives them the wrong answer. And guess what happens? The blame game begins. Everyone blames the AI, the model. We need a better model. The AI is broken. But the model isn't broken. It's just working with garbage. The real problem started five years ago when someone built a quick ETL job to solve a short-term problem and that temporary fix became permanent. And then someone built on top of it. And then someone else built on top of that. And you have got this house of cards. So when you put intelligence on top of inconsistency, you don't get insights. You get confident nonsense. And confident nonsense is actually more dangerous than no answer at all. Okay, here's another thing that drives me crazy. Companies come to me and they say, we want to use AI to optimize our operations. Great, optimize for what? They don't know because nobody ever defined what good looks like. Nobody documented the decision-making process. Nobody agreed on priorities. You can't automate a decision that humans never actually made. So AI gets blamed for what's really uh, the lack of strategy. Now, here's what's interesting. When you force that clarity, when you make teams actually define what they want, something shifts. People start realizing that AI isn't magic, it's a mirror. It shows you exactly where you are unclear, exactly where you have been inconsistent, exactly where you have been avoiding those hard decisions. And that mirror, it's uncomfortable. I know that, but it's also necessary. All right, this is the one that worries me the most. Most companies launch their AI system, they celebrate, they move on to the next project. And three months later or six months later, they have no idea if it is still working. No feedback loop, no monitoring, no golden data set to check against. Just a PowerPoint deck from the launch that says 95% accuracy, that's it. But AI isn't a static thing, it's the living system. The world changes, the data changes, user behavior changes, your business changes. And without evaluation, you're basically driving blind at 100 miles an hour. Evaluation isn't something you do at the end. It's the architecture that keeps the whole thing alive. So that's the bad news. But here's the good news. And this is what nobody tells you. These problems, they are actually adjacent problems. You start fixing one, the other gets better and easier. And the framework to fix them is simple than most consultants will tell you. You need three foundational pillars and you can start building them today. Let me show you how. You see, every AI system that actually works, and I mean actually works, not just launches and quietly dies, they have three things. One, data integrity. Two, decision clarity. And three, evaluation architecture. That's it. That's the framework. Now, most people hear these terms and they think, these are abstract, corporate buzzwords. Believe me, they are not. Each one of these is specific, practical thing that you can build. 
and I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like. Let's break down each pillar, not conceptually, but practically. All right, pillar one, data integrating. Here's what this actually means. One source of truth per domain with explicit contracts, not clean data, not good data quality. Those are outcomes. What you need is a system where everyone agrees on what the data means and where it lives. Let me give you a concrete example. Let's say you're building an AI to predict customer churn. Right now, you probably have customer data in your CRM. So that's Salesforce, HubSpot, whatever. Your billing system, your product analytics system, your support tickets, maybe a data warehouse that's supposed to unify everything, but doesn't. And so here's what data integrity looks like. Step one, define the contract. You create a document, literally just a Google Doc works, that says customer status is defined by the CRM, period. If there's a conflict between systems, CRM wins. Updated daily at 2 a.m. UTC. That's a data contract. Step two, build a single materialized view. You create one table that pulls from the CRM and enriches it with specific fields you need from other systems. But the CRM is the spine. You version it, you document every field, you write down what null means. Step three, break the old habits. Anyone who wants customer data, they use this table, not the raw CRM, not the old pipeline. This one materialized view that you built and you enforce this rule. Now you see, this is really interesting thing that I observe and what happens when you do that. The first time you try to build this contract, you will discover something. Different teams have different definitions of active customers, for example. So sales things, anyone who's uh, paid in the last 90 days is an active customer. Finance things, it's anyone who has an active subscription. Product things, it's anyone who logged in the last month. Uh, and that's not a data problem. That's a business problem. But the act of building the contract forces that conversation. And once you have that conversation, your AI suddenly gets way better. Not because you change the model, because you clarified the input. So here's the action that you can take from here. Pick one critical data domain, just one, customers or revenue, inventory, whatever your AI needs most. Write down where is the source of truth, who owns it, how often it gets updated. What happens when there's a conflict? That's your first data contract built from there. Let's move on to pillar two, decision clarity. Here's what this means. Before you build AI to make a decision, document how a human would make that decision today. Sounds obvious, right? Nobody does it. Let me show you what this looks like in practice. Let's say you want AI to automatically approve or reject customer refund requests. Right now, support agents do this manually. They use judgment. That's not good enough for AI. So here's what you would do. One, shadow a decision. Sit with your support team for a week, watch them make the decisions and take notes. You will discover they are actually following certain rules they have never written down. For example, turned if uh, the um, a refund request is under $50 and the customer is in good standing. Escalate if it is more than $50. Auto decline if this is the third refund request in 30 days. Raise an exception if the customer is in, an, is in enterprise tier. Now these are actual rules, but they only exist in your people's heads. They are never written down. Step two, create a decision log. You write these rules down and create a simple table with condition, decision, owner, exception process, and list the rules down in that table. That's it. That's your decision log. Step three, validate before you automate. Here's the critical part most people skip. Take that decision log and run it against 100 real cases manually. Did it produce the same decisions your team made? If not, you found those edge cases. Add them to the log. Only then you build the AI. Now here's what happens. Half the time when you do this exercise, the team realizes they don't actually need AI at all. They just need the rules written down somewhere. The other half of the time, you build AI that actually works because you gave it a clear objective. So here's the action you can take tomorrow. Pick one decision your AI is supposed to make. Interview three people who would make that decision today. They are your domain experts. Ask them, what information do you look at? What's an automatic yes? What's an automatic no? What makes you unsure? Write it down. That's your decision log. Everything else builds from there. Here's what this means. You build the evaluation system before you build the AI system. Not after, before. And let me tell you why. Most teams do this. They build the AI, they test it manually, launch it, hope it keeps working. And then they wonder why it degrades. Here's what works. 
Step one, define your golden set. Before you write a single line of AI code, you create a test set. Not just any test set, we call it the golden set. This is 100 to 500 real examples where you know the right answer. You have verified it, multiple people and teams in your organization agree. It represents your edge cases. For the refund example, you would collect 50 cases that should definitely be approved. 50 cases that should definitely be denied. 50 edge cases that require human judgment. 50 cases where the rules recently changed. You'd label them. You document why each one has its label. Step two, build the evaluation pipeline. Now you create the system. It could be as simple as a Python script that runs your AI agent against that golden set, compares the output to the expected answer that you have labeled already. It calculates metrics like accuracy, precision, recall, whatever metrics is uh, important for your use case. Then it flags new types of failures. And this runs automatically every day, every time you change the prompt, every time you change the model, anything changes in the system, you run this script. That's the system. Now, step three, create this feedback loop. And here's the architecture piece most people miss. Every time a human overrides the AI in production, you log it. Every time a user complains, you log it. Once a week, someone reviews these logs and adds the interesting cases to your golden set. Your golden set grows, your evaluation gets smarter, your AI gets better. Now, I know you are thinking this sounds like a lot of work, and honestly, it is. But here's what happens without it. You launch, it works, everyone celebrates. Three months later, users are complaining. You investigate. Turns out your AI started failing on a new edge case one month ago, but nobody noticed. Now you are in firefighting mode. With evaluation architecture, you caught that edge case the day it happened, fixed it before the users noticed. Before you build or improve any AI system, create a spreadsheet, just a Google sheet, add 30 real examples of inputs your AI will see. For each one, write down what the right output should be. That's your minimum viable golden set. Run your AI against it weekly. Track the score. That's the evaluation architecture. Start there, build from there. So that's the framework. Data integrity, decision clarity, evaluation architecture. Three pillars, each one practical, each one buildable. And here's what I have seen happens when companies actually do this. Their initiatives, their AI initiatives stop being black boxes. They become systems. Systems that their teams understand, systems that they can improve, systems that don't mysteriously break. They are not chasing the next model. They are not hoping for magic. They are building on foundations that actually hold. And their success rate, it's not 10%, not 30%, it's north of 80%. Not because they have better models, because they have better foundations. They have built better systems. Look, here's the bottom line. AI doesn't transform a business. It reveals how untransformed that business already is. But once you actually see that clearly, once you stop blaming the model and start fixing the system, that's when the real transformation happens. The real metric of AI maturity isn't how good your models are. It is the integrity of your data, the clarity of your decisions, and the robustness of your evaluation loops. Now, I know I just gave you a framework, and frameworks are great for understanding the problem. Next week, I will show you how I use another framework to craft an AI strategy to take it from strategy to implementation quickly. So if you want to see how this framework becomes a strategy, subscribe and I will show you next week. Thank you for watching.